You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and give us a five-star rating on iTunes to continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Passive Practice Profits, Brain Tap Technology, Sherman College of Chiropractic, SCED, Cairo Pro Accounting, A-Line, and Midwest Brain Health Technology. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 278 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I am your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester. So today we have the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Donald Francis over in Scotland. And if you want to hear about the wisdom of 33, stay tuned. Welcome to another episode of the Cairo Hustle podcast. This is episode 278, and today we have Donald Francis coming all the way over from Scotland, and it's uh, it's going on bedtime over there. <laughs> hey, you're right. <laughs> My children will be in bed when I get home, that's for sure. <laughs> well, thank you for making some time today to, to be on uh, this uh, podcast episode with us and to share your knowledge about chiropractic and uh, a little bit about how you got started into this beautiful profession. And I know we've just been kind of joking around about you spending some time over in the harshest climate in the world, uh, <laughs> Davenport, Iowa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was. I, I mean, I think really you have about five months of great weather in Davenport, uh, March, <laughs> April, um, end of September, October, and the beginning of November. And then it's too hot and too cold. <laughs> yeah so coming from that that area um we call it we have two seasons we have uh uh winter and construction season <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right when everything especially in the roads mm. but all jokes aside uh, let's 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 focus uh more on this uh this profession of chiropractic and your story specifically and this honestly after us doing so many of these interviews on chiropractors, it's still my favorite part of the segment is to hear in the chiropractic story from the chiropractor, because maybe your practice members or your patients don't know your story so well. Maybe people have heard it and it just hasn't been amplified to them in a long time. So let's just share with our audience today, uh, your chiropractic story and what influenced you to become a chiropractor. Well, I, first, I had my first chiropractic interview in 1977, and the irony was the reason I was taken to a chiropractor was because I kept getting sick, too sick to have my tonsils removed. And I saw a chiropractor who, and it allowed me to be well enough to go into hospital to have my tonsils removed, and the irony has never left me. But um, that same chiropractor, uh, that was in Rhodesia, um, in 1977, um, we had a, a civil war on at the time, and uh, that chiropractor and myself found ourselves living in the United Kingdom, close to Oxford. He moved to Oxford, where he's just retired after 50 years. He's a Palmer grad, John Howard. Um, he was at Palmer um, at a great time for Palmer rugby. Anyway, I met up with him again in my teens, and. Um, he really inspired me to become a chiropractor, but I had an itch that I needed to scratch. And that was, I needed to go off to join the army. And I was offered a commission into the British army as a, as a lieutenant. And I did about um, 14 years or so in the British army. I left as a captain in 2005, um, just before I went to Palmer. But the long and the short of it was I actually really enjoyed the army, but I always had this flirtation with chiropractic. And um, one day I just realized when I was in the army, I, I wasn't very happy uh, for all sorts of reasons. And just serendipitously, that very day, uh, my great friend and mentor, John Howard, phoned, almost like the, it was meant to happen. And it probably was. Um, and this was in 2004. And um, we spent, we had dial up internet in those days, and we spent like a whole month's worth of dial up internet after that conversation 
looking up uh, colleges, looking at Palmer College, really. Um, and we started the application process of going to Palmer. Anyway, about three or four weeks after that, I found myself in Iraq uh, with the British Army uh, for, for five months, which I confess that I did enjoy and um, to a certain extent. But when I left it, I knew I wasn't going back. And the whole time I was out there, I was applying to Palmer. So by the time I got back, my eldest son was born and um, and we were we started the process of moving to Palmer. And it takes about a year to get out of an army, especially when you're an officer. But it took about a year to plan moving my family to America, getting loans, student loans um, when you're old. Um, I was 31. And, um, and I had to go to Scott Community College for about six months as well to get some prerequisites done. Um, which I was pleased about because I'd been out of any form of academia for, for a long time. So um, I enjoyed that. And I started Palmer in March, February or March, 2005. Uh, yeah. No, I'm lying. 2006. I apologize. 2006. And um, graduated in June, 2009. So we've just done 12 years. And I had a great time at Palmer. I actually, I loved it, despite the weather. And I made a lot of really good friends. <laughs> you know, I, I love the story. You know, you, you, you tell people about being so dedicated to service and being in the Army. And I think one translates to the other. And now you're serving the chiropractic profession. Now you're serving your local community. Now you're building uh, a future for other chiropractors as well which I think we'll get into a little bit more of those stories as we go. Um, and it's very unique that you grew up in uh, Africa and you, you, you know, you start to go to work in the, the British military and then you go off to Davenport, Iowa to become a chiropractor. And now you're back to Scotland uh, practicing and have a lot of people that are helping serve that local community and it's just a, it's such a good story to hear of people that are following something that really uh, is passionate for them. And, you know, they can do something to change people's lives. And that's really the, the, the quality of the story that you just shared with us is it's a lifetime to become this, this healer that you are today and to really bring the profession back together stronger because of the roots that you started yourself with. You, you dug deep roots um, going to college at Palmer and making that that sacrifice, if you will, to be able to become who you are today, which I think is very, very, very honorable. So thank you for uh, sharing your chiropractic story and where you are today. Oh, well, thank you very much, um, Jim. Um, really, um, I, I, don't, I don't know how great a chiropractor I am, but I, I hope one day to be greater. So we'll, we'll keep trying. <laughs> well, do you have any advice that you would give to another chiropractor who wants to make a larger impact on their community or to get more patients? Yeah. Just um, get a, get a coach, get a mentor, get, get a, get a mentor. Um, you know, I have had several great chiropractic mentors, some of which I've paid and, and some of which have just been like, we talked about Fred Schofield earlier, you know, people who've been, friends of mine or people who gave me some great advice through college um, you don't have to do it on on your own get a get a coach get a mentor there are professional coaching companies um, I, I do a little bit of um, kite coaching on as a side hustle on but um, just really on a, on a limited basis with, with one-on-one -on -one. Um, but I've always had a coach for the last 10 years pretty much um, and I would say just get get a get a coach, somebody that chimes the way you chime, somebody that resonates at your frequency, and somebody who's gonna who's at least ahead of you a little bit that can help pull you up. Um, I took a long time to learn that lesson. I, I opened up on my own. I was thirty six, I think, and I struggled and practiced for about eighteen months. Got myself up through to 50 patients a week, maybe terrible patient visit average, terrible PVA. Um, I had a lot of people coming and, and people were, were generally happy, I think. Some of my patients from that period are still my patients, so I can't have done too bad a job. But uh, 
I got a coach and my practice uh, probably quadrupled over about an eight or nine month period. I had the basis, but I just, I, w I wasn't running systems. Um, I, I wasn't firing on all cylinders, definitely. And, and a coach just really helped me pull all the things that I had going right, but were all going all over the place and helped me just streamline all of those. And, um, and I've had several other coaches since then, but, um, but I would definitely say to any, any chiropractor, no matter how long in the tooth you are or in the profession, no matter how successful you are, there's always somebody more successful. And there's always somebody who's going to teach you something. Um, you know, my, my, my most recent coach, Pam Jarbeau, we coached together for two years. Um, and um, in that two years, my practice, I, when I started coaching with her, I thought my practice was already going great. And when, you know, at the end of two years, it was so much bigger, so much um, uh, more slick, and the depth of the practice. So, you you never you never stop learning in this profession. And uh, the other part of your question, Luke, in terms of getting more patients, it's difficult to get patients in the beginning, but if you if you're very good at what you do, and I suggest that everybody tries to become a good chiropractor, but more importantly than that. They become a chiropractor that speaks right from right from there. And every word they say is the truth because they live it, they believe it, and it's just every day that they're in practice is just an extension of themselves and an extension of their life. And I think that's by far the easiest way of, 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 getting, of getting new patients. Um, we can go on to other methods in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm very thankful for you to share both aspects of that um, because authenticity is a part of being a good chiropractor and to be able to be a good healer, you have to have good connection and you have to be able to let people know who you are, um, why you do what you do and, and you know, become a part of the, the culture with them. And also the coaching aspect of it is – I believe a lot of chiropractors, they finish up and they go out there into the real world after they finish the real world of education and they become the island and they become the one that says, I'm going to set up here and I am going to do it my way. I am the doctor and this is the way that it's done. And they don't realize that they also need to have connection of their larger chiropractic community. And I think yeah. that's massively important for people to, to stay connected with their, um, their brothers and sisters in chiropractic. And that coaching aspect um, is something that really, like you said, you can have your own island, but if you don't tether yourself to other people's great influence, um, the island drifts, man. And uh, that, that's something we have to really be cognizant of. And you tend to get, I bet you those people who are islands, they get tired, they get burned out, <laughs> they get you know, um, somebody else, you don't have to, everybody who tries to reinvent the wheel, somebody else has reinvented the wheel and made it go a hell of a lot faster, you know? <laughs> um, if you're trying to reinvent the car now, go and talk to BMW because they found a really good way of making it go. Yeah? <laughs> and, you know, when people think about it, go all in. Like yeah. when, when you become the doctor of the present, you have to go all in. Yeah. And you have to, and you have to figure out what is it going to take for me to have more energy, to be more yeah. intentional with the people that do come in and trust me, and how can I do the right things to make a better business for me and my family as well. So when you go all in, part of that is uh, trusting somebody to be your your mentor and your coach. Absolutely, and and I think um, you know I, I've had four or five coaches over ten years. I, I think. Um, don't be afraid to change your coach. And, and most coaches should be mature enough to, to recognize when the, the relationship's ready for a change, actually. Um, you know, anyway, I've had some great coaches. I could list them all, but, I, but that would take a while. <laughs> well, as a provider who helps his community stay healthy, what are some things that you're doing for yourself and your own family to stay healthy? I'm going to say something. Do you know how many chiropractors I know who don't get regularly adjusted? 
What I mean by that is they'll get adjusted at seminars by somebody they haven't seen for nine months, two years, somebody who's who's going to do a, a very quick palpation and give them the best adjustment with the greatest amount of love and they'll feel better for it. But they probably won't get another one um, for, for six months or more. And um, so the first thing that I do is every single week I get checked by, by one of my colleagues, one of my associates, um, using a systemized technique and that person can then follow any changes in my subluxation patterns. And subluxation patterns should change, otherwise chiropractic's not doing its job. You know, we're trying to create change in the body. And then I adjust all my family. And so I get adjusted. And I'll tell you what, if you're ever sharing, um, if you're ever sharing adjustments with another chiropractor, make sure you go, um, make sure um, they adjust you first. A bigger pardon, it's the other way around. You adjust them first. So when they adjust you, they, um, they've they been adjusted. So you get adjusted by someone who's been adjusted. Anyway, get adjusted and I adjust my family. I check my family every single week. And we therefore grow up and live a chiropractic lifestyle. So that's probably the most fundamentally important thing if we're going to be chiropractors. We therefore eat well because we, we think healthy. You know, we we make most of our own food. I always um, like to exercise. Um, I lost uh, 10 kilos, about 22 pounds last year. I realized that I'd actually turned into a bit of a fat bastard during the first lockdown. Um, there was a bit too much, too much high quality red wine and not enough, uh, not enough moving with intention. Um, so I definitely, I work out and I meditate. Um, but of all of the things that I do, fundamentally, I get adjusted. I get checked. And if necessary, I get adjusted weekly. Because if that's what I'm telling the rest of the world to do, I fundamentally think that I need to live my own uh, my own truth. Well, Don, that's what I call eating your own cooking. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to eat my cooking, man. <laughs> You're very welcome to come and stay with me in Scotland, but uh, I'll get my wife to do the cooking. <laughs> well, I'll come for the adjustment then. <laughs> I'll come for the wine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try and provide both. <laughs> well the cover will be empty okay <laughs> <laughs> and we'll use up all the adjusting paper the the table <laughs> paper <laughs> who needs paper <laughs> oh you're so much fun man you've made it to cairo hustle Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Passive Practice Profits, Brain Tap Technology, Sherman College of Chiropractic, SCED, Cairo Pro Accounting, a-Line, and Midwest Brain Health Technology. Let's hustle. So what are some of your favorite ways to stay connected with your community? Well, one of the things I like about Scotland is that we still actually have a real sense of community um, where we are, we, we, we connect in our town about six years ago, I, I was a principal in, in one of the local festivals and I couldn't quite believe how famous I was so quickly. I, you know, I walked into the supermarket and the lady behind the counter knew who I was and, and I hadn't, you know, didn't know who she was. So the first thing I do is wherever I go, I expect to talk to somebody in a friendly, kind way and a very open way. and. I talk to everybody who are, how I would like to be talked to. Just go out and, and, hi, how are you? Because most people, you know, are, are like that. And the world 
you know, when when you are kind and open, the world is kind and open back to you. The second thing is these days with social media, you can engage with a lot of people really quickly. And I do a lot of little short 90-second videos, which we put out through um, our clinic page and, and through our um, through my own page. And they're all designed to lead people to understand a little bit about chiropractic, chiropractic philosophy, uh, general life. And, you know, what was it I was told the other way? We give away a lot of free stuff, you know, uh, <laughs> how to do, how to look after yourself. And, and they're short. And uh, I was in a, a supermarket the other day and there was a big line. We call it a queue. You guys call it a line. I learned that one in Iowa. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> um, so I was in the I was in the line, and the the guy said, "Hey, hey, Donald, you can come over here." And I said, "How do you know me?" And he said, I, "I'm always watching your Facebook post." So that was great. I, I have a, a little a small local following who who like it. I do try and inject a little bit of humor in, um, but I like to start something with a with a question that's designed to challenge somebody. So. I know I'm talking, I know Americans are listening here, but I might start the question like, you know, what happened to the last person who cured anybody? And I don't know. know. Well, he was crucified because no one's ever cured anybody. We all heal from the inside, you know, and if we're chiropractors, we heal from above, down, inside, out. Um, No one, no chiropractor, if they ever put their ego away, has ever cured or healed anybody, you know. And so I'll start a, I'll start a, a Facebook live or or a little talk like that. And that's just designed to challenge people so that I can lead them into an understanding whereby they can learn that they can heal themselves as long as we get interference out the way. And we do that through the the process of the chiropractic adjustment. So those are the two ways, really. We have a wonderful community. You know, we when we're not being muzzled with just corona nonsense, we, you know, we have real meetings, you know, real community gatherings where you go and and just be in the community. And when you're in, when you're when you are in the community and um and you're friendly and approachable and, and people want to talk to you and ask your advice and opinion and stuff. It's, it's great because you become the person that they, they want to go and seek that information from. And I love that action. I love your responses to this. And I always tell people to give away their best stuff and tell people and, you know, connect with people. And one of the things I lead everybody to do, which many of the people are going to be watching this, they're going to, pick up this one thing is to be social on social. And when you're on the platform of Facebook specifically or Instagram specifically, um, find the tribe of people that inspire you and connect with them and become familiar with them and start to become in their community. And that's really what we did with, you know, our first film is we came out and I started digitally knocking on people's doors and saying, Hey, we're here. We've arrived. Let's do something special now. And, uh, you know, I think that that's really what it is, is now, you know, I get calls from guys like Dave major. It's been in the profession for, you know, going on 40 years. And he's like, Jim, you've done it, man. I'm like, what I do. He's like, you became household. How did you do it? And I was like, well, I just knocked on everybody's doors and said, Hey, I'm here. Let's do some work now. And going back to your, your story, um, people will all the time pay for good services and they'll always refer in for good services. And when you become really kind to other people, they pick up on that and they want to work with you, you know, and, and I, I, I missed the boat with your book, but you created a book uh, helping chiropractors, <clears throat> you know, share their message to more people. And you did something really important for the profession as you unified a bunch of chiropractic voices and you published something. So where people now have a resource to go back to, but and yeah, man, man, and it's 33 and 33 principles of, of chiropractic is one of the fundamental um, messages that every chiropractor should know. And they should have it hanging on their walls in their homes and their offices. And uh, yeah. I know. Thank you, Jim. And listen, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I, I emailed you and I'm guess because you are household now, you must get literally hundreds of messages a day. <laughs> and I'm sorry, mine just didn't, my message to you got on the filter, but we would have loved to have had you on the book. In, well, in the book. But as it is, we've got 70 people from across the world, Australia, New Zealand, Chile, Argentina, South Africa, the United Kingdom, Canada, all over the United States. Our mutual friend, uh, Fred Schofield, FJ Schofield, 
Billy DeMoss, uh, Jill DeMoss, Pam Jarbo. We've got chiropractors from um, Spain, uh, Mark Hudson, Anna and Escheveste. We've got chiropractors from Australia. We've got Craig Foote. We've got Martin Harvey. We've got uh, we've got Brian Kelly from New Zealand. Um, you know, so we've got so many great voices. So some are famous, some are really well known, and some are just people that I've come across over my my twelve or so years as a chiropractor who've inspired me a little bit. That I think that I thought just needed um, just needed a, a some platform for their story to get out, and um, it's it's doing really well. I, I think as of today, we've sold about seven hundred copies, but it's been out a month, and. Um, um it's been out a month or so and um yes monique andrews you're absolutely right jenny Pence. <laughs> Mo is out there and um anyway we um it's doing well and our hope is to for it to do much much better um over time we're going to travel the world to to big seminars hopefully and sell it because it's in the big seminars where we will actually uh, get to keep a lot more of our money um, because Amazon takes Amazon skins us alive every time we sell one on Amazon, and the idea of is not only so it's called the Wisdom of Thirty Three, um, and it's got the Scottish flag on it, and it's it's the Wisdom of Thirty Three, a gift for chiropractic from Scotland, and um, the intention is that by selling this we're going to do two things. One is we're going to raise some money for the the Scotland College of Chiropractic, which with all good for, faith and fortune will open next year 2022 that um there are some real snags as with anybody who's ever opened a chiropractic college in the modern era will know um you know dd palmer god bless him opened a college because there wasn't any other ones and then as soon as there were lots of colleges people started making rules and said what you had to do to make a college so you know they're trying to get through that so everybody who buys this a significant proportion. In fact, everything, because I paid all the costs to get it printed and started. So everything other than what Amazon and people take will go to the college. The second thing is just to get a message out there um, that there is a college. And what we did is we asked people all over the world to uh, distill something really unique, something special that they could give the chiropractic profession in less than 2,000 words. So we asked um, a group of people um, to to contribute. And so we have 33 chapters, or as we've called them, wisdoms. And each chapter is divided into two parts, to give to basically to broaden the appeal of the book. Um, and so we've got 66 half chapters, really, of, of wisdom. Some chapters are, are written by, by couples. So I know mutual friends Skip and Julie Weiss, they've, they've co-written a chapter. And Tim Young and his daughter, Alasha, have co-written a chapter. Tim has got Focus OKC coming up soon. Um, and uh, these are really, you know, it's. I know I've got my name on the front and I help produce it, but it's a bloody great book. It really is. Well, you know, I, I just wanted to, to highlight a couple things here that you said. Is It's a very philanthropic piece of uh, content you put together, a piece of art. And the money goes to a greater cause. And it's just like the chiropractic adjustment. The adjustment's always free. You know what they pay for? They pay for your schooling. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic advice, actually. Thank the you. adjustment's always free. What they pay for is your expertise and the knowledge that you have to uh, detect and correct that subluxation. You know, and I think that the book is uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, paying it forward to a bigger cause, which is creating a better education protocol for people to become uh, principal chiropractors over in, in Europe, in the UK specifically. And I think that what you're doing is, uh, you know, it's a great, great cause. Chiropractic is a great cause. You know, I didn't jump into chiropractic as a journalist because I wanted to make, you know, a, a big splash financially. I, I came into the space as a journalist for chiropractic because I believed in it 100%, 100% of my days. And that's really what it takes is for us to get chiropractic more household is to get 100% of our intentions going to 100% positive, 
positive movement for chiropractic and uh, blow off the naysayers and uh, anybody that doesn't believe drop the keys and let them know it's just like gravity. They don't have to believe in it, but it's going to work and they should send their families in to see us and see if it, it could make a positive impact on their lives. And it doesn't always have to be for them, but it could be for somebody that they know. And I think that that's what happens when you get a text into somebody's hands like that is they get a chance to start seeing these stories and they can start to see the miracles of the people that are the truth tellers within this profession, the 66 chapters that you have and the messages behind those chapters and the heart that went into each one of those passages. And I think that that's really what this is all about is it's a philanthropic mission for you to support something greater and to bring great people together for a bigger cause, which is chiropractic. You're so right about the cause of chiropractic. Uh, I mean, you know, the, 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 the problem in chiropractic under the surface is that we're not a united profession. We have those who, on our side of the sort of thinking pond, we detect and correct subluxation. I hadn't realized until I came back to, because I went to Palmer, and Palmer is not maybe as, uh, as, as hardcore chiropractic as it once was, you know, and perhaps, you know, maybe not as hardcore as, say, Sherman or Life or Life West or New Zealand, but I was taught to detect and correct subluxations, and that's what I do. But I went to my first technique seminar in the United Kingdom, and I used the word subluxation, and it was like sort of dropping the C-bomb in a room full of nuns. It was terrible. Um, you know, we... It's our word. We should be proud of it. We shouldn't be embarrassed about that word. And, you know, I'm, every single chiropractor I've ever met changes lives. There, there are none that don't. There are some that don't believe they do. And if they believed a little more, hell's bells, imagine how many other lives they would change. But unless we make colleges and train chiropractors and keep chiropractic going on a, on a steady path, who's going to adjust my grandchildren? Amen. You know, my children are growing up so vital because they've been adjusted their whole lives, you know, and they're going to grow up thinking that's normal. But if there are no chiropractors, well, my daughter's going to become a chiropractor. But, <laughs> you know, we need to train the people who are going to adjust our grandchildren. And we just scratching the surface. You know, mm -hmm. if we looked at every single person um, who we, you know, we adjust and amplify that by thousands of times. That's really where we need to be. I think that, you know, in 125 years as a profession, we've not done a terribly bad job, but we still got a long, long way to go. <laughs> I, I'm not, I would like the profession to stay united, but I'm, you know, I'm not certain that if, we, if we're going to keep a, a, a pure strain of chiropractic going, which I think is vital, that you know there is going to be friction for a long time in this profession. Well, I think you you nailed uh, you hit the nail on the head there with uh, you know correcting the course that we can and uh, making sure that we do protect the sacred trust long term, and that if people decide that they want to go and do something else, you know, there's tons of different professions that people can uh, bang the drum with. And they can go in and uh, be any type of practitioner that they want. And I think a lot of times people want to come in and manipulate for uh, the best choice of words, uh, the profession of chiropractic. And it's, it's not for the manipulation. It's not for the, the parceling off. It's not for the sell off. Um, it's here for the long term. And if it is something that ever goes through a division process, um, people will know that the lesser practitioner will be the one with lesser ethic. And the one with lesser um, principle and the one with lesser philosophy. And I don't think that they'll be the righteous ones and they'll be maybe cast off and uh, they, they won't be the supported strong group. And I do think that the more philosophically sound group that has the real tenets of the historical resonance will be the ones that stand strong long term. So it's OK. They can come well, in and try to fractionalize the profession. And they are, and they will, and it will continue. It's it's not a game to play. It's not a game that will be won or lost. But you'll see what happens long term is the people that love chiropractic for the the 
the essence of the check and the adjustment will be the ones that will carry this profession to the next level. And the ones that don't, it's like pruning a tree. Like you have to prune the tree to make it grow better sometimes. And sometimes you, you, you have to prune it the right way in order to get the, the, the best, uh, you know, the best quality, um, future for that tree. So I think at chiropractic is a lot like the tree of life. And sometimes you have to prune pieces off in order to get the best tree to grow. Good analogy. And I, I'm certain we'll survive. I mean, there's far too many people's lives have changed. And those of us who, those of us who follow a, a very tr you know, true chiropractic path, we tend to be very successful, you know, professionally, financially. And, and I've never known anybody who, who, who has interpreted the big idea in the way that it was intended, who has a small practice. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you interpret the big idea in the way that that message is intended, you are going to have a big practice and you're going to change people's lives and people are going to want to see you. Um, and the only thing, just like you use the word manipulate. I do like one person to manipulate part of my life. And that is I like my accountant to manipulate my finances. So I pay <laughs> less tax. That is where the word manipulate comes into my life. <laughs> Well, as we begin to wrap up this interview, maybe you could let us know who some of your uh, inspirations have been. Who has uh, empowered you to be the chiropractor that you are today? Oh, well, my, the mentor who got me into chiropractic is a very special man, Dr. John Howard. Um, he's just retired on um, on Tuesday after 50 years in the profession. He graduated from Palmer Davenport, 1970. And he's been a, a really, a really, really great inspiration. Um, there are many, many people within the, the profession who've, who've inspired me, um, some very big names on the speaking circuit. But I think, like a lot of chiropractors, the people that have really inspired me the most have been the people who've got off your table whose lives have been changed by the fact that you just adjusted them. Because up until you adjusted them, the chances are nobody else ever did. And their life was removed, not by something that you put in, but something that you took away, the, the interference between their brain and its ability to intimately control their body future. And therefore, when you give somebody an adjustment, you don't just change them in that short space of time, in that refractory period after the adjustment. You change the course of their lives. And that has probably been the greatest influence in my life um, and, and the continual greatest driver to make one want to become better and better as a chiropractor. You know, and after a thousand interviews over the past four years, um, one of the most honest things I've ever, ever heard is people saying that the patient is the influence. And coming down to the baseline of what it means to be a servant leader is learning from those that you take care of. And I think that that's really, really impactful is um, the people that you take care of is the, is a part of an extension of you. And when you get a chance to see, you know, one of our questions, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to is a miracle story, but you've told the miracle story. You've told the miracle story about the influence that that your service has had by the adjustments that you've delivered has had on you. So you're actually the miracle story. You're you're the one that got the the best benefit out of being the practitioner. That you got a chance to observe people's lives changing time and time again. Isn't that wonderful? So many people. I went to, when I checked out of the supermarket yesterday, and I asked the guy how his day was, and he said I only got. I only got an hour to go. And imagine living your whole life looking at the clock and wondering, uh, you know, your whole life is spent looking at the clock wondering, you've got an hour to go. You know, I'll look at the clock and think, shit, I've only got an hour left. <laughs> <laughs> and for, for, for me to you, um, I appreciate you spending uh, one of the last hours of your day before you go home to the family with us in Cairo Hustle and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom and your heart uh, for our show and to be a part of this larger tapestry that we're compiling for the chiropractic profession, documenting it as well as we have been over the past four years. So I want to just welcome you to the chiropractic uh, Cairo Hustle family. Thank and, you. Uh, 
it's been such an honor to have you on as one of our guests. Well, thank you, both of you. And, and thank you so much for what you do for the profession, because really there are so many stories. And when people like you amplify the little people like me um, and give us a chance to, to, to share our message, it's a, it's a great honor. Thank you very much indeed. Well, it's our pleasure indeed. But uh, before we all jump off the line, where can people buy the book? Where can people find out more about you and what you're doing? Okay, so the book is available um, through any distribution source. So if you're in North America, Barnes & Noble, Ta <laughs> Target, or as my wife used to call it, Target, um, Amazon, of course. Um, and all I would suggest is just put in the wisdom of 33, Donald Francis, into Google or any other um, search engine, and you will find somewhere locally that you can buy it. It is our aim to try over the next two years or so to get to as many of the big seminars as possible where we will be selling it in person, or if it won't be me. It, I hope it will be somebody representing the, the group that we've put together, selling it in person, and you'll be able to buy it in cash. And you'll, you'll also be able to buy one of these beautiful hats, I hope. It's called a Glengarry. Um, and it's it's something that we've created to represent the tribe for the, the Scottish Chiropractic College. So wherever you see people at seminars and places wearing this um, Scottish military hat called the Glengarry, you'll know that they're supporters of the Scotland College of Chiropractic. And about me, I'm Donald Francis, Tweed Chiropractic Clinic in Scotland. I'm on Facebook. Um, I'd be delighted to have a conversation with anybody about chiropractic because um, it's probably my favorite subject. I know that I should have other favorite subjects like my family and my wife, but chiropractic <laughs> is probably it. So thank you very much. <laughs> well, Donald, uh, I'll be looking forward to getting my Glen Gary cap. I'll and, send you, uh, I'll send you guys one. I'll get your interest <laughs> and I'll send you one. And supporting you uh, everywhere I see you every step of the way. Thank um, you. And good luck to you too. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're a big inspiration, and I thank you for uh, taking some time out of your busy schedule to be our guest today. Uh, it was an enormous privilege. Thank you very much indeed. Well, Dr. Donald, we want you to uh, enjoy the rest of your evening with your family, and we want to thank you for being our esteemed guest today. Thank you very much indeed. All right, we'll talk to you soon, my friend. Take care. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.